Good day learners. In this lecture, we will be seeing about biopotentials. At the end of today's lecture, we will be seeing the outcomes as action potential, resting potential, repolarization, depolarization, absolute refractive period, relative refractive period and we will know about what is the Nernst equation and Goldsman equation. What is the bioelectric potential? The electric potential that are generated due to chemical activity in certain cells such as nerve cell or muscle cell are called bioelectric potentials. These are the ionic voltages produced as a result of electrochemical activity of certain special type of cells such as nerve cell or muscle cell. The cells in body are encased in a semi-permeable membrane that permits some substance to pass through the membrane. The cells are surrounded by fluids. As we all know, the fluid contains ions such as sodium, potassium, chloride and phosphates. There are two types of fluids. One is going to be the extracellular fluid and other one is going to be the intracellular fluid. The ECF is the external cell fluid or extracellular fluid. The fluid outside the cell membrane is called as extracellular fluid which is rich in sodium and chloride ions. The ICF is the internal cell fluid or intracellular fluid. The fluid inside the cell membrane is called as ICF. This is rich in potassium, magnesium and phosphates. In normal condition, the sodium ions will be outside the membrane and the size is more than the size of the holes inside the semi-permeable membrane. The sodium ions cannot enter inside whereas the other ions like potassium and chloride can enter the membrane and gives the resting potential. And after the stimulation or the excitation, all sodium ions can enter inside by its increase in diameter of pores or holes. It constitutes depolarization and gives the action potential. What happens in the resting state or the resting potential? The fluids surrounding the cells of the body are conducting. These conducting solutions contain atoms known as ions. The ions are sodium, potassium and chloride. The semi-permeable membrane permits potassium and chloride ions whereas blocks the sodium ions. And hence, the sodium ions inside the cell becomes much lower than that outside the cell. Since the sodium ions are positive, the outside cells are more positive than the inside. Thus, the charge balance is not achieved. The equilibrium is reached with the potential difference across the membrane and the negative on inside and positive on outside. And this membrane potential is known as resting potential of cell. The resting potential is positive rating from minus 60 millivolt to minus 100 millivolt. The cell with resting potential and the state is said to be a polarized state. The characteristic of resting potential is analyzed with the help of two equations. The first one is going to be the Goldman's equation and the next one is Nernst's equation. The value of resting potential is maintained as a constant until some kind of disturbance upsets the equilibrium. It strongly depends on temperature. Since the permeabilities of different cell type varies, the corresponding resting potential varies as well and it varies from minus 60 to minus 100 millivolt. The Goldman equation is given with the resting potential Vr. K is given as Boltzmann constant, T is given as absolute temperature, Q is going to be the charge of electron and P suffix K is the permeability of potassium ion. P suffix Na is the permeability of sodium ion and P suffix Cl is permeability of chlorine ion. And the K, sodium and the uh, chloride ions 
given within the brackets given to be as the concentration of potassium sodium and chlorine ions and the subscripts i indicates the inside cell and o indicates the outside the cell when the goldman equation with the values that is the permeability of sodium ion and the chlorine ion is approximately equal to 0 that is the value is going to be equal then the goldman equation is reduced into a nernst equation and thus the potential also differs when a cell membrane is excited by some form of externally applied energy the membrane changes its electrical characteristics and begin to allow some of the sodium ions to enter inside it the movement of sodium ions into the cell constitutes ionic current which further reduces the barrier of the membrane to sodium ions the net result in sodium ions rush into the cell and try to balance with the ions outside at the same time the potassium ions present inside the cell try to leave the cell but they are unable to move as rapidly as sodium ions as a result the cell has a slightly positive potential and this potential is called action potential the action potential is nearly 20 millivolt the process of changing from resting state to the action potential state is called as depolarization during depolarization of a cell sodium ions rush into the cell while the potassium ions attempt to leave the cell after some time the cell regains its original position by an active process called sodium pump by the action of sodium pump the sodium ions are quickly transported to the outside of the cell and the cell again becomes polarized and attains its resting potential and this process is called repolarization the rate of pumping is directly proportional to sodium concentration in the cell beginning at the resting potential depolarization and returning to resting potential after repolarization the time scale for the reacting potential depends on the types of cell producing the potential in nerve and muscle cells the repolarization occurs so rapidly following the depolarization that the action potential appears as a spike of as little as 1 millisecond for the total duration regardless of the method by which a cell is excited or intensity of the stimulus provided it is sufficient to activate the cell the action potential is always the same for any given cell and this is known as all or nothing law A short period of time during which the cell cannot respond to any stimuli is called absolute refractive period. The time period is about 1 millisecond and the next is relative refractive period. The period follows by the absolute refractory period. It is the relative refractive period. During this period another action potential can be triggered but a much stronger stimulation is required compared to the older thank you everyone have achieved our outcomes of this particular lecture in the next lecture we will be seeing about biopotential electrodes and the type of electrodes